wind and rain and no flooding yeah yeah the wind from the cyclone was the main thing we were worried about here because we're not really at a flood risk position but most that happened with the wind was just wailing around the house so sleepless nights and then got a palm tree out front that drops some fronds but it does that in winter anyway uh, we get really strong southeasterlies in winter southwesterly sorry that come up off the Tasman so no real different to that Keep right, and then exit right. squeezing on past exit right. didn't realize this was so far away <laughs> it's one of those things to see a good delivery I'll jump at it and just accept it straight away kind of need to just take the opportunity to drive without having the speed restriction to get to where it would be and then see if it's still there but I don't want to risk losing the contracts as the downside trees falling is just normal for yeah exactly always get a few branches coming off especially when there's big trees that people don't like to get rid of you, know, you get those big ones that people go oh it's a it's a heritage tree You've got to protect it yeah one day that's gonna crush a car you know that right exit <laughs> right usually better to get rid of something under controlled circumstances not just whenever nature decides to fell it for you So there's this big ugly old building in Mount Eden. It's like an old shot tower or something. Something bizarre. Absolute eyesore. I didn't even realize it was still there. I used to live in Mount Eden. And yeah, saw it then, but assumed they would have gotten rid of it. It's still there. And they had to evacuate apartments because they were worried it might fall over. And now people aren't able to go back for like a week. All because someone decided that some ugly cast iron piece of junk needed to be preserved. No idea why. It's not pretty, it's not interesting. <laughs> Most of them are natives too, you can trim them and not fell them. Yeah, but that's really inconsistent as well, because it just depends on the variety, but if it was like a endangered native, I could understand that, but otherwise, if it's just a native tree, cool that means we've got tons of them so that means they're not actually that special <laughs> you know i don't think we've got any particularly endangered native trees you got the big cody which are really nice but you know and there's obviously the die back infection they've got a phytopter or something in them so there's efforts to save those big trees which is great when they're in the forests <laughs> but not every tree of the same variety is to be considered equal realistically At the roundabout. like Bahutakawa or a dime a dozen Pittosporum is certainly nothing particularly special. That's the thing, is there's a ton of native shrubs that don't get any sort of protection. Yeah, don't work in politics, not my job. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it's mostly just a sort of rubber stamping thing where it's like, we just we have the rules the way they are and then you've got to go through a really costly expen uh, ex exception process or something like that so it's a case of if you really want to do something you have to pay for it and go through this whole rigmarole you've got to really want it and they'll just scalp you for as much as they can <laughs> tidy little earner for some I'm sure yes if it means that we don't have to pay as much rates <laughs> whatever But I mean, that's why you have conservation land anyway, right? 
that's where you actually protect things. In like regional parks and all of that sort of good stuff. Like, it's nice having trees around and all, but sometimes they're in the stupidest place. <laughs> you go along a footpath and they're just roots underneath, leaves everywhere, blocking drains, causing more flooding. You know. <laughs> it's not the trees that are the problem, it's where people decide to put them. Keep left. I mean, we're just lucky in New Zealand, really, we've got so much land that you just can't really use anyway, so we just preserve it. We have all of the national parks, because it's useless to build on anyway, so win-win. <laughs> should put more, like, decal palms and stuff around the don't take up much space and they look nice. Keep right, and then exit right. I'm a big fan of uh, native flax because then you get the tui when they're in flower. Exit right. They're a good edge. Need to decide what to do with our place. <laughs> New house, bare ground, no idea what to do with it. A little bit faster through there. So where are we going anyway? North. Unfortunately it is nights, so we don't get much of a scenic view. Here we just got big black truck. I wish that that made the Valentine's trailers light up. No, they should have a red glow, like a pulsing glow. But no. Nothing of the sort. They made the Christmas ones more interesting. But, I don't know, different design team maybe? Got a bit lazy. Yeah, pink neon on the- yeah, that would be good. It's a weird design too, it's got like a, a keyhole on the heart, which is weird. But then you have that all lit up in gold, that would look cool. Really need to see if there's, if someone's done a mod that allows you to go faster on the external contracts. <laughs> it seems like the sort of thing that, surely there must be something in the game code that could be worked around. Because only going 90 through here just feels so slow. These are really good roads. <laughs> like left. locking a relationship, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I've got the key to my heart. It's like, I don't know. can you give me a swipe card instead? I don't know. Keyless entry. Mine's got a keypad. Five, five digits or more. I have a relationship pin code. Why did you break? I wasn't even drifting into that lane for once. Apparently the driver decided, nope, I don't want a piece of that. 
the high beams on, we can see a little bit more. Need just a bit more clear moonlight to brighten the nights up a little bit more. Keep right, then exit right. Exit I'm a look. Right. Fair enough. Happy lurking, friend. <laughs> I'm barely awake, so this is a low energy stream anyway. why we have the uh, the chilly DM to try and just keep us moving just keep driving that's the key that's the other thing about driving through night in this game it really doesn't help in terms of getting tired eyes it's just this terrible contrast I would hate to be actually driving through the night in one of these. And a lot of trucks do go overnight because it's, you know, quieter roads, just generally more convenient. Doing overnight deliveries and stuff, that would be tough. That said, I'm usually more awake at night than first thing in the morning like now, so there's that. Kids from next door going up and down the driveway on their scooters. It's like, uh, oh, to have that energy again. <laughs> the other day I was out bleary-eyed getting my coffee something out the corner of my eye I looked across it's the kids from next door bouncing on their trampoline you can see them over the fence as they bounce up it's like god you, you have too much energy but at the same time I'd love it if our own had that sort of energy even now half the time my daughter ends up just sleeping a lot Keep right. heart's fixed again right. now but still takes takes a lot of energy to do things it seems exit right go in up Brian. Turn right. sounds almost French I suppose then it would have two ends Well, it's good to have an excuse to go this way, going so far off the main road. Normally, I'd have no reason to come here unless it was to pick up or drop off a delivery, so that's cool. I must need to check the map and see what that other one is off to the left and see if we can go from there after dropping this one off. So that would be handy. Sweet track. Genera diversity. Turn left. Strong Saint Germain vibes. Okay, another one of these ones. So we know we can go straight through if we need to. Yeah, we do not need to. All right. Good tour. So to go up this way and back, or do we need to turn around prematurely? I think this is good. Ah, oh, yeah, just tuck around the corner. Easy as. Well, I guess that's why it's only 40 XP, not 90.
Yeah, we still came in too close to the building, it seems. There we go. Good enough. Pretty straight line down the side there. Pretty happy with that. Excellent. So let's check the world map first. So Coleco would be a good one to get a cargo from. But beggars can't be choosers. Well, that would be good. It's a little bit further than I would like. That's the only problem. That one... Yeah, see, that's a better delivery. But I've got to go ages just to pick it up. So, net difference doesn't really benefit it. I think I'll go for this one then. Four hours, four minutes. Much longer than we would like. But it does take us back up the coast, which is nice. We were wanting to go back that way for exploration's sake, so... Let's go. And yeah, it's not that far to get back around. So otherwise we'd have to go all the way back to the main road, backtrack, and then come back again to go southwest again. No, it's just tedious. You can refresh the list a few times and see whether you get something better, but... And day's breaking, which is nice. It means that we do actually get to see some of the scenery as we go along. interested to see how I'm meant to get back to I'm guessing I get back to the main road by going the way that I'm about to be going Turn right. so with that in mind do I go yeah I think I might just go straight okay. through here Let's find a new route. yeah because to go east from where I'm picking the trailer up I think I have to come back that way so I may as well go off the way up ahead right and then exit right and then I discover more of the roundabout. <laughs> Exit right. Slap. Turn right. So I want to do right. this, we'll and then the this, and then this bit actually doesn't matter so much because I'll be going around the roundabout fully anyway. Keep right, and then exit right. Filling in the gaps. Let's just do this, Recomputing. and then bounce our way around here. Hopefully, we got all the silver bits. Get ready to turn left. There we go. How turn is left. that corner Advent still undiscovered? Left. That's so weird. Oop. Going this way. Here we are. Kind of on time. Where's the trailer? There's the trailer. That's a weird place to tuck it out of the way. But okay. <laughs> you hear all the boss. Coleco is a type of cat, isn't it? And sure enough, that side road is what we'll be taking to go back again. We want to stay nice and wide on the corner up here. Make sure that we tick off the... Oh, it's because, yeah, we've got to go around the outside of that. That makes sense. Okay, so it's, this bit is actually a separate discoverable area. That's so bizarre. Yeah, very nitpicky. Keep oh, left river. And then turn yeah, missed left. it. Never mind. Turn left. That's a weird roundabout. It's got like grid lines on it. First I thought, is this like a soccer goal in the middle of the roundabout? <laughs> it's when you're really dedicated. That'd be funny, two soccer pitches just like 
two roundabouts close to each other and you have a goal on each one and you have to fire it down Get ready to the road. Right. That'd be funny. See, that would work, work better with golf, I guess. Have a green on different roundabouts. So you got to hit Get from one to the other left. without getting it on the road in between. That'd be a challenge. Turn left. That's a mini golf map waiting to happen. I guess that's what the. There's a city map in the Super Mario Golf, I think. I guess that's what that is. Three hours and 43 minutes. So that's about. Yeah, what? quarter of an hour total three or oh, one hour is three minutes so more like 11 but parking time always takes a while and any random exploration we decide to do along the way oh, those engine noises I did see a thing shared by SCS software that apparently they're working on the sound like the ambient sound in the game and it's past time for them to do something about that. It's just the engine notes especially. Particularly egregious. Just every car sounds like a rattly diesel. At least we get to enjoy the scenery this time though. It's like going through Canterbury. Or Marlborough, I guess. You're back. Welcome back. I'm from Ten Two Sides. Quite a nice part of the country around here. I think this latitude of Spain is very similar to New Zealand. It's basically the antipode. They just tend to get much drier, hotter weather coming up from the Sahara or just Africa in general. In summer, so they get the much hotter summers. I'm glad we have things a little bit more moderate. Keep right. Still in bed, went live. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit of an early start for me. Normally, I wouldn't start until a bit later. There's not really any good time to go live though for me because it's like this time. What is it? Late night over in Europe, which for some people I guess is good, but for others not so much. And then for the states, it's like really early hours of the morning, so that's no use. <laughs> and then for local, it's like a lot of people just do other stuff. Weekend mornings, so yeah. Finding new route. But we just do what we can do. I used to care about that more. It's like, oh, but it's a really bad time for an audience. It's like, yeah, it's what VODs are for. Because <laughs> if you think of that too much, then you just never stream. Just If it's a good time to go live, just go live. <laughs> Be around lunch in the States. You're right. Yes. You like, you add a few hours and take off a day. That's right. Yeah. That's why peak streaming hours for a lot of American streamers is like our lunchtime, I guess, because it's mid-afternoon, getting on into the evening. Yeah, that makes it. Right. You usually notice more people from the state's time zones start filtering in when I've been streaming like 11, 12, 1. If I go late, then yeah, like 1, 2 p.m. That makes sense, because then it'll be like dinner time, evening entertainment time. Let's 
get the wide angle again. I do like this sort of terrain. Last time I was playing Hunter Call of the Wild, I was doing the map that's set around, I think it's around Spain. That was a nice place to explore. I need to play that more. Don't care quite so much about the hunting aspect of it, really, though, you know, it's engaging. Shoot the thing, numbers go up, you know. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much to keep me happy about a game. <laughs> oh, I meant to be keeping left. Sorry. Sorry. Just drift across the lanes there. Keep right. There's also a spin-off of the Call of the Wild, the Hunter. I've got an angler one, so it's like a fishing game. Which seems bizarre. I'm not that much into fishing either. But in game format, maybe. Like, I go hard on fishing mini games and MMOs. <laughs> because you don't actually have to do anything to them. So it depends what the gameplay of that's like. Either way, it promises to have good scenery, which is half what I care about in those games anyway. Yeah, a good time for you to stream just go live. Exactly. It's like, you, you never know who might be hanging around and is keen for some entertainment, so even if it's not a good time, there might be plenty of people who happen to be you know, just hanging around anyway. It's just still looking for something to watch. <laughs> Subnautica technically a fishing game. Maybe. <laughs> you don't have to catch fish as part of it. But you can. <laughs> Would be interesting if they actually had a like a spear gun or something and you couldn't just grab the fish. They make it too easy to catch fish in that game. Like you just swim up to them and press E or click. Not very engaging. Should have yeah, like a harpoon gun. They were adding fishing rods in Icarus, I think. I don't know how they're going to make that work, but depending on how that works as a, as a minigame in Icarus, that could be cool. Because that's more of a full-on survival game. But then they do also just have fish in the lakes that... Well, maybe they remove them, but previously you could just like hit them with a knife or whatever and then collect them. So it depends if they stick with that. Maybe there'll be different fish that you can only catch using the rod. I'm not sure. Be cool for late game. Yeah. Yeah, if there was like certain fish that were really slow, like the bladder fish, you know, you you need those early on just for water, so you make those easy to catch still. But you have others. I mean, peepers are hard to catch anyway without a sea glide, but just make it that certain ones you can only catch using the right tool. It would make 100% a lot more annoying, that's for sure. Thankfully I realised. See, I just saw that I needed to turn right and thought, oh, I need to be in the right lane. No, apparently not. <laughs> it's a cool design on the map for the intersection there. Up the food intake for the hard catch. Yeah, and the energy density for your bioreactor. That's the real use for fish late game. <laughs> I enjoyed the 
my modded playthrough. Actually, I can't remember if I did it in the modded playthrough I had on stream or not, but... The custom craft run I did. I can't remember if I had the one in there where you have a protein block recipe. And it's got different recipes, so you can make like a fish protein block or a vegetarian protein block if you've been growing stuff. But that was a good idea, rather than just have cooked fish being your only option really. You could actually process them using the fabricator into a protein block. Kind of like right. what you get, all the nutrient yeah, blocks right. that you normally get from crates and stuff. It added a recipe to make them, which I thought was a nice, right. nice idea. Should really have been something like that in the original game. I haven't played it in so long, and neither. I was playing it more regularly up until last year because I was still doing the fortnightly bingo that we were doing. But over Christmas and stuff, things just got too busy fell behind and now it's one of those things that just feels hard to get back into. I mean you've already got like 1200 hours in a game then it's like well <laughs> specifically in a game that doesn't have anything new. I mean I've got almost as many hours in this now but I'm doing new things all the time. This is where it ends. I mean, this is an area that I haven't even discovered before. Oh, okay, we're just spinning it around and dropping it down the gap there. That's cool. And we went too far. We need a different angle. There we go. Apparently I got some trailer damage, it's like, but, but you want me to park it here. It's a very narrow channel. Yeah, see, it's, I'm hitting the other side, I think. I'm just trying to get the right angle to go straight back, but I keep hitting something. But well, make your thing slightly wider then? There we go. Now we've got it. That's a very narrow park though. I must have just been clipping that little orange pig. Just not wanting to accelerate any harder. I just I'll crawl it back. There we go. Yeah, that was that was tough. <laughs> needed more of an angle than I thought. Very unforgiving on getting it right. Okay, well that's El Ejido found at least, which is nice. So there's no other depots, this is the only one here. There's a viewpoint there as well, which we'll also check out. But we could do that on our way out of town. Now the perfect one would be getting a delivery to this place in Granada. <laughs> so I could go viewpoint to viewpoint. That's highly unlikely, I doubt. It, it's probably more than 100 k's away. Oh, hey, there we go. If they're on the first page, it must be good. Eh, yeah, or not. Or it just means all of the deliveries are crap. One of the two. Well, I guess we go to Malaga. We've already been to Malaga, I think, but... Oh, well. Well, we can give it a cheeky refresh. And uh, refine it down. And it's only giving me the same things, so I guess we're doing that. That's fine. Haven't bought all of the new map expansion for ATS. Oh no. <laughs> a shock. Texas is a good expansion too, because it's really big. <laughs> you get plenty of bang for your buck on that one. Uh, where's the viewpoint? Because I want to... 
here is. I want to do this one first. Stop the engine. Activate viewpoints. Don't have Texas. I think that's a felony. Greenhouses of El Ejido. Okay, so that's their big industry. Puerta del Mar Menor. Okay. Six months jail time. Okay. You are hereby sentenced to three months line dancing in Texas. Now, Texas is good. I was enjoying exploring. Lots of photo opportunities, viewpoints, places to explore. Quite a diverse sort of scenery between the north and the south. And yeah. The only thing I was finding really annoying when doing the community event for it is some of the depot positioning positionings. Like, it would be a delivery to Victoria or something, and it was almost at a different city it was ages away and it was yeah the city boundaries seemed really weird but whatever <laughs> doesn't matter too much when you're playing casually i'll find a new route it was just bizarre when it came to doing the community event deliveries Montana, Texas, Wyoming, and Colorado you don't have. Ooh. I mean, I'd say that you're missing out, and I think you are, but... <laughs> it takes a long time to explore all those places, so... I can understand getting to a certain point where you just don't feel like playing it again. <laughs> For myself, I kind of just jump back in when there is a new community event or new DLC drop because I enjoy playing the game but I don't want to play it all the time so I pretty much only play it when I have that excuse like I have a, a new reason to play it but the rewards you get from the community events are kind of eh it's like a paint job and stuff it's it's not that exciting but it's something, and it's enough for my mind to go, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, I, when I first started playing this game, I'd just be playing it relentlessly. But I have so many other games that I also want to play, and a lot of them are not as good for streaming. Like, I tried playing Witcher 3 on stream, I did so again recently as sort of a because they did the remaster update so I jumped in to see what is different spoilers not much <laughs> and it's still a great game uh, but playing through the whole game it's the sort of thing I usually take my time with and doesn't become very engaging viewing I know a lot of people seem to stream things like The Witcher and they get a decent audience out of it but I'd spend a lot of time just staring at the screen not saying anything and I, I like getting immersed in those sorts of games to the point that I'm not really paying attention if there was someone in chat or anything like that so you know a rare occasion that there would be also those are the sorts of games you get a lot of backseating whereas something like this you know it's, I mean you could try and backseat I guess but <laughs> don't know what you'd say. You should really have the Scania. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, people with their favourite trucks. But otherwise, like, I've been slowly, very, very slowly working through Assassin's Creed Origins as well. Because I would like to also play Odyssey since I have that. Yeah, you know, all the games you pick up on sale and then never play. Buy them and play casually and explore slowly over time. Yeah, that's what I used to do. And that's what I do with a lot of other games, that's the thing. Whereas I feel with these games it's quite handy as a stream game because it is just chill. 
and having the community events just it gives a goal and having some sort of goal is quite nice I mean you can make your own goals of course I, I mean I have the goal sort of of I for one would like to explore 100% of the map again but before getting to that point at the very least I want to actually visit all of the cities in the new DLC areas which I did not do because the introductory events you only need to do like you know 15 deliveries or whatever between different cities but I mean for Iberia in this for example there was like 50 new towns towns and cities were added so I have not visited all of them yet so that's certainly something that I can do on my own time but again it's a I, I think it's a really good stream game because it's soothing <laughs> for my style of gameplay anyway which is chill Recomputing. yeah no good for a more active streamer but that's not really my style so so we need to sleep but it's only midday so that's kind of annoying but we can sleep twice because it's an external contract so we don't have a game time limit we have a real time limit so we can just sleep twice get through to tomorrow going for 100 percent of mad max crazy how much little shit you have to grab yeah 100 percent in some games is just punishing And it also depends on just like how difficult it is to find things. More and more these days I just resort to finding walkthroughs and maps and stuff so that I can find things rather than going hunting for them myself because it'll take me forever otherwise. <laughs> you might stream your suffering. <laughs> it's the sort of thing a lot of people go in for. Again though it kind of depends on then whether or not you want spoilers potentially because Let's, let's drive at sunset actually it's not fully dark yet we've only got an hour and a half to go so let's at least take it there and then we might sleep again to get through the night time but sunset driving is nice too but yeah the problem with streaming things like yeah challenge runs 100% runs it's a case of whether or not you mind about having people offer unsolicited advice <laughs> but hey sometimes that's very handy <laughs> hard to find the stuff but you miss one thing location to play through it before nice. yeah so in which case yeah it's the sort of thing that then it becomes a case of you get people coming in it's like hey i wanted to do that too but i didn't know where things were and then they learn like one of the main watched videos of mine on youtube is one of the all achievement runs for subnautica and i like put timestamps for where each of the achievements was achieved and had had actually had some comments of people basically saying ah oh, thanks because i had trouble getting such and such or knowing what to do so it's always nice to help out a bit I mean, I'm always looking for those sorts of videos in games myself, so <laughs> how the hell do I do such and such? Where the hell is this? So, it's nice to actually make a video like that. I think the main thing for me with games is it's I mean on the one hand it's not very immersive uh, you should just know nothing at all but it is nice when a game will have at least a counter of a particular region so you know you hover over the map and it'll say two out of ten for such and such a thing so it's like okay I need to look there for more things 
you can then go the next step and actually have like little question marks pop up when you get close even for collectibles and stuff some games do that or it's a case of it'll appear on your map regardless so you know to investigate something others don't do that but at least having the the counter just kind of teasing you that yeah, there's something you haven't done yet right. i find right. that's quite good Whereas if it's just leaving you to your own devices Excellent. and right. you just know, or well, sometimes you even don't know, like there's, there's games where even if there is a place to track things like lore, sometimes there'll be ones where they'll have question marks that you then discover and fill out. Others don't even have that and it just automatically adds to your repository and then you never know if you're missing something. And those are the annoying ones. It's like, well, how am I supposed to know that I still have more to look for? When do I know that I'm done? And if it's just a, like a percentage counter on the save file or something, then that's annoying. Typical movie game, high place to find everything on the region. Yeah, makes sense. Excuse me. I've not played many movie based games. I've watched a few uh, game-based movies, <laughs> but not played many movie-based games. I think the closest I probably came was playing Lord of the Rings The Third Age on Xbox, where you kind of paced the main storyline. Like, you got to take part in certain bits, either alongside the heroes or... I think a lot of the story you were coming in just after the fellowship you were like a, a backup fellowship almost so you were following along i think the story was you played a dude who was like trying to follow up and chase after boromir or something and then you encountered like an elf and a dwarf and yeah you got to shadow the the main party and and take part in certain events like in a different way that was cool i like that idea that's just locations all the scrap and other clickables yeah it's the other little bits that always right. are the thorn in my side in games like that it's the sort of thing that it's just it's a a difference in play style as I've gotten older basically and have less time or mental energy to dedicate to just a game so like back in the day when I was playing GTA 3 for example I would spend hours in that game scouring around and I would find all of the little uh, collectible packages and stuff that you knew that there were more that you needed to collect but you had no idea where they were, you just knew that they were kind of an evenly distributed, so it's, oh, I found one there, so therefore there won't be another one close to it, so I've got to look a bit further away. And you, you find things in odd nooks and crannies. But these days, if I was playing a similar game now, I would just look up the map of where is everything so I know exactly where to go and get it <laughs> because otherwise I don't have time for this shit <laughs> which is a, you know obviously not playing the game as it should be played and it's a bit disappointing but it's also just inevitable because I got shit to do <laughs> I'm working most of the day I can't then be spending and I've got a family so I can't then spend all night just chasing after collectibles in a game. Not anymore. <laughs> this is a really annoying thing to try and get into. I'm actually going to go around the outside, find a couple of trailer park girls, because I need to get a better angle on reversing into there. So I think the best way to do that is, one, I'll just explore and then two, I can reverse from much further away. 
because it's down this line of trailers here. So that means I need to turn around here and just back all the way down. And figure out where I'm supposed to put the damn thing. Because it was the one just after the other trailers. And I will be taking a short break after this delivery as well. Because I have to go do the heavy lifting. Get my daughter in her chair for food. Let's grab these used to upgrades. Ah. I mean, when it's things like upgrades, that's the sort of thing in games that I go out of my way to try and find as soon as possible. Because I like to be as upgraded as I can be when it comes to doing the actual storyline. <laughs> okay, now I went too far. Um, I always think it was after that next trailer, but it's actually between them. As you doing, yeah. <laughs> it's like in Witcher 3, I went so far out of my way in not just the starting White Orchard area, where, you know, it's all like level, it's whatever, level appropriate. Can't remember what the levels are, but it's it's low level. But even when I got to Velen and you go out of your way and find some really high level areas, I was being chased by very powerful monsters. But I was going out of my way to try and find all the places of power to get all the ability points as soon as I could. <laughs> because you get like one per level, but then you get them as you get the places of power as bonuses. So I was trying to get all those bonuses as soon as I could. 13 out of 14. Nice. <laughs> 